back in our studios here live to you from Cape Town from the parliamentary precinct and as I've said it's outside it's going to be taking place in the Cape Town City Council which is today yet again is masquerading as a parliament bringing together the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces to hear the State of the Nation address the 2023 edition as we continue to build up we've been talking to a number of government officials ministers in particular now I'm delighted to say we're joined from the minister by the minister in the presidency, Mondli Kungubele. Minister, good afternoon. Welcome to ENCA. Thank you for your time. I know it's very busy for you as you're building up, and, uh, but I'm sure most of the hard work has been done now in preparation for today. Good afternoon, Bredan. Thanks for the opportunity and your viewership. Uh, it's one of those most uh, critical moments, challenging moments. We are traversing a tortuous path. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard times indeed, not just for South Africa, but for the world, but we are here now. What an overriding question first would, should South Africans hope to hear tonight? Uh, South Africans, in a traditional way, should expect the update on the performance. And based on the outcomes of the performance, and there will also be commitments going forward, they must also anticipate uh, some sense of urgency with regard to what we are confronted with now, especially the energy crisis, which has become uh, the current uh, Achilles heel. Uh, we expect that to be addressed at length. Uh, you, you will know, Braden, that one of the interesting things is that our economy is proving to be resilient. I'll tell you why. In spite of a series of economic reforms that are strictures in the economy, last year economy grew twice in the first and the third quarter. Last year, first quarter, our growth reached the pre-pandemic era. On the third quarter, the size of our economy was bigger than pre-pandemic. In spite of all the challenges, remember throughout last year, economy energy crisis was there, and we had not yet completed dealing with the economic reforms. All I'm saying, our economy is yearning to grow. It's just us who must deal with a number of issues. But you, it must be discouraging that as you saw that uh, upward trajectory of the economy in the period you've just outlined, we've now entered this year with, with the worst round of uh, blackouts, of load shedding, because we've seen the impact uh, directly with manufacturing for the, in the last quarter in terms of GDP growth. They, they were hit hard. It's a, it's a truth we are confronted with, which we did not wish to be confronted with. But we feel maybe this is the right time that it confronts us, so that we do, we become real about it, so that we appreciate its scale, its nature. And I think now, as we sit here, take into account that the president, July last year, made propose an energy intervention plan of about five interventions. Now. He put together a NICOM crisis committee. And uh, as we talk now, there's what we call an energy action lab, where now the teachers sit with him nearly on a daily basis, just to make sure that all the key aspects that needs intervention are dealt with. All I'm saying is that it's unfortunate, but it's a truth that we, we had to know it at some stage. Maybe this is a stage we've got to know it, and it has actually forced us to sober up. Will there be real action? On, on our road down here with my colleagues, uh, Gareth, Bay, uh, Gareth Edwards, uh, a fellow anchor, and our managing editor, John Bailey, we stopped in smaller towns along through the Free State, and here we drove down from Johannesburg to, to Cape Town. That is the number one issue, the energy crisis that people are saying. But people are saying, we've had enough of speeches. We know there's good policies, there's good regulation, there's framework, there's law, there's teams and all that. We want the president to tell us on Thursday night, what are these actionable steps they're going to be taking to make sure we get our electricity back normally? I think maybe you, you must have been following the governing parties, and you must have listened to the president during January 8th. They want to call this year the year of action. In other words, this year, there must be a difference in as far as a number of people who are confronting sewage, lack of water, environment of indignity. This year, there's a commitment to deal with that. 
the, the, the issue of jobs is the issue, as I'm saying to you now. Remember, when we started, the job was 27% unemployment. It went up to 35. And recently, it has gone to 32. And now it's getting disrupted by this. And the fact that it moved from 35 to 32 in a short space of time after COVID is an expression of a number of interventions that are made. For instance, the Vulindela operation, that is dealing with a lot of uh, structural reforms. Your spectrum, uh, you, re you know it was auctioned for, and we received no less than 14 billion. But the key thing is the, is the, is the, is the, is, is the accessibility of connectivity and so on. I can go on, there's a clear program in dealing with issues of water under Minister Senzo. I've gone to some community, at some stage I was in Kiani, because we are saying this here, there are two critical things that must happen. Our people must either, those who didn't receive water, receive it. Those who have not received must not doubt that it is coming. And I, I saw this in Kiani. People said to me... And Kiani has been a problem for and, years. And I saw it in Kiani. They said to me, the water has not arrived, but we can see Senzo is coming. Yeah. So there's a bit of hope for them. They see the work example. being done. Work yeah. being done. Okay. So a year of action. Now, in terms of performance, in minutes of the presidency, I, I, I recall that monitoring and evaluation sits in that desk. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look since last year, SONA to today, you look at the various areas that, of course, different ministries would have been responsible for as part of their key performance uh, areas. Mm -hmm. Are you, as a minister in the presidency, satisfied that the progress made so far, not all the boxes are ticked by this. This was a beautiful idea, this one year in review yes. that was distributed by government for yes. you guys to us to see at what the president promised under every aspect, mm -hmm. including Operation Vulindela and mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. But there are other boxes which are not ticked, sure. like the land reform. The land reform doesn't have a single box that is, mm -hmm. that is ticked. Mm -hmm. But I you just overall satisfied there's been progress listen we we are not satisfied but we appreciate that there's a demonstrable uh, massive efforts that our colleagues are showing in a number of areas. education continues to improve uh, the bachelor staff has improved and um, maths average of 60% I'm not talking maths literacy I'm talking pure, yeah, pure, pure mathematics. mathematics there's a lot of improvement there and uh, access to education of course, there's a challenge of what we call three curriculum dimension, academic area, vocational area, and the, the occupational area. Vocational area and occupational areas, those are the areas still have to make a huge difference. I visited uh, the, the, the Afri Forum Technical School. Uh, we, we are going to, we are about to engage the president on the massive work that is being done. Are you bringing back the vocational colleges we, that we, were closed down? For, for, for the, the key thing is that if we want to improve the absorption of the young people to the economy, I, I'm not surprised, then, Brendan, that when you look at why elders are easily absorbed by our economy, there's a relationship between the technical exposure that applies in the manufacturing industry and but when it comes to IT, of course, young people will be easy. But the broader scope demonstrate that we have to turn around our TVET colleges, their infrastructure, what they give to our kids. You know, TVET colleges, when you are out of a TVET colleges, you are either an electrician, an artisan, uh, a fitter, and so on. There's a less of that currently as we speak. Yet our economy needs it. And the Afri Forum has demonstrated that when you expose children to a competent infrastructure for that purpose, their kids get absorbed. Yeah. On another issue, crime, uh, 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 violent crime that we see, mm. and then of course the GBV, I mean, you put it all the, uh, and then you look at corruption. I mean, there were certain measures that are supposed to be recommendations from the Zondo Commission into mm. state capture. But just looking at it broadly, are you confident as government that it is possible, for example, to decriminalize and protect the procurement space, the tendering system, which has been corrupted so deeply uh, over the last few years. I think we, let me put it this way. Uh, maybe it's important to make the point that, Braden, until social economic situation in our country is tendered out, 
a lot of the problems we are confronted with have a lot to do with social economic situation. Forget that me and you, in spite of having been exposed to that environment, we still didn't do what other what the things other people are doing. So turning around the economy is primary. And I know the president is going to speak about that. Okay. Uh, so that you deal with the issue of desperation of people who have got no access to food. You deal with the desperation of the SMMEs, which, which have got no access, which have got minimal access to funding, minimal access to, which are also exposed to a lot of cost of doing business. You deal with that. You deal with the issue of ensuring that infrastructure is turned around for productive capacity. Your, your roads. I'm happy now Minister Kodongwana is, is going to say something during his budget on issues like Sandra, and then they are going to say something about uh, the, toll, uh, the tolling. You know, all those issues affect the investor, the investor, the investor mindset. As, as long as you don't deal with those issues to turn around. Remember, the president could have said last year, the government will play a key role in creating an environment to unleash the private sector because 80% of the jobs are created in the private sector. We are spending a lot of time doing that. Are, so, you, are, are you effectively reducing the red tape that many businesses complain about? Vulindela has got a positive report, but Vulindela also still has a long way to go. For instance, we, there's still a lot of applications in the mining, which amounts to billions, which need to be unleashed, and we're working with the Minister of Minerals with regard to that. There's issue of water that must first track, that must be fast track because security of water is critical. Yeah. Naturally, energy crisis is what we are speaking about. Yeah, one of the items which didn't get a tick in this review that we've received about making government work is the issue of state-owned enterprises. Okay, and that point here is. Uh, uh, through the Presidential State-Owned Enterprises Council, identify state-owned entities to be retained, consolidated, or disposed of. Where are the sticking points? Why are you seemingly struggling well, with that? I think significant amount of work has been done there. All what we require is that the council must place before cabinet the recommendation of what should be done. Remember, uh, uh, it, conventionally, State-owned entities are supposed to improve the capacity of government. But the history in our country has been the opposite of that. Yeah. Except few pockets of excellence, your IDC, your Sastria, again, a the number of them, those, your DBSA and so on and so on. There are entities in South Africa which have stood the test of time. SARS used to be that kind, but it's back now after state capture and so on. All I'm saying is that the convention is state-owned enterprises are always put together to improve the capacity of the state. Yeah, but would, are you open to selling some of them? Disposing uh, uh, some of them? When we dispose, the options are going to be there, whether it's disposing, whether it's uh, changing issues of equity and so on. You might find that this one we don't want to completely dispose of, want to keep 10 percent so the nature of disposal will determine the approach yeah, so the minister i just want to tell our viewers that we got live visuals there of the public protector or the uh, the acting public protector uh, uh, advocate Galega arriving there in a in a pink dress i wonder if that's the main color that we'll see today on the red carpet now very, now a very young public protector yes very who's young. been groomed by the struggle yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I've had uh, the privilege and honor to interview a couple of times, mm -hmm. even before she was acting, mm -hmm. when she was appointed as a deputy. Now, mm -hmm. now just back to this issue of SOE. So you're going to look at different options when you dispose yeah, so of. The nature but of disposal will determine yeah. how you dispose. Okay, but here's a question. I've heard this being said many times. The business of government should not be to run business. Should not be? To run business. Okay. A state-owned enterprise is a business. Mm -hmm. Why do you still want to hold on to some of the, of the enterprises? I, I'm here to be told there are very few countries in the world that don't have state-owned enterprise. The difference is that in other countries they are competently run, in other countries they are value-add. The problem that people are attacking us on state-owned enterprises is the competence. Once they are competent, for instance, you would speak about ESCOM. When ESCOM was in the top two most comp uh, performing entities in the world uh, around 2002, there's no one would ever ask you to, to, to sell ESCOM. The problem is not whether you own or not. 
The problem is is the value add of the state-owned entity okay, in society. Okay, or, or how it's run. If you mention yes, competence again, yes. is it well managed? Yes, But, but yes. our state-owned enterprises... People don't have a problem. They, 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 you know, Nelson Mandela, uh, Nelson Mandela would have said, I don't care whether the, the cat is, is white or black, as long as it catches mice. People want a cat that catches mice. Okay, but these cats that you have have not been really catching mice. They've been doing other things. For the example, problem is not who owns them, it's probably whether they are catching the mice or not. But, but, but the governing party has deployed some of those people to run them, they, where the incompetence comes. So you should take part of the blame. We've accepted the, 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 the skills misallocation. The president is leading very tightly on that. If you look at the review of SOEs now, the issue of skills and boards and how they hire and also separation of functions. One of the things that has irritated me, I can tell you now, brother, is I've seen at times ministers dissolving competitive board because there's a clash between certain personalities <laughs> and so on. You need an institution that protects performance. In other words, what do I mean? There's, a, there's executive, there's bureaucrats. The institutional relations must be of such a nature that a skilled person who come to join government must know that as long as I perform, I'm safe in government, irrespective of who likes me or who hates me. Yeah. So, so, so the question of merit will be top of mind yes. in terms of matching the skills yes, and yes, stuff. Yes. So w will the president give an indication sort of how, for example, the public service will be further professionalized, which was a promise he made last year, but it did not receive a tick in your review? No, no, no. I'm sure that review was before we adopted the professional review, uh, what to call, uh, a system that has been agreed. It's in the system of government now. The fact now the DG in the president has been institutionalized as a head of the administration is a product of that uh, professionalization. Maybe the tick were before the, that, that result. Okay, and, and the public service unions are very powerful. I mean, standing from outside, I mean, when they demand uh, double-digit salary increases and they threaten strikes, one can hear in their different formations, are they on board to support this professionalization drive? Because the state, the public service needs to be professionalized. Let me tell you this, brother. A sustainable relationship between the state and unions will be the one that delivers to the people. Remember, the state does not belong to trade unions. Trade unions are incidental upon the creation of the state, but the people who fund and capitalize the state are taxpayers. How we deliver to them will determine the relationship between the unions and the state. And, and that fair balance is the one that will actually going to sustain between workers and, 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 and the state. Okay. Minister, now, just uh, finally, an uh, uh, overriding question. At the end of tonight's speech, will South Africans be more hopeful? Would they be more inspired? Or would they stay with a sense of, ah, oh, it's like same old same President Ramaphosa speaking to us in a beautiful language and s telling us our problem that we know, but not really uh, giving us a way ahead in terms of what's going to be different now going forward in this year of action. But then if I, 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 I would have exaggerated my capabilities, if I think I know the people who are 32% unemployed, who are confronting energy crisis now, what would make them happy? But I think the test, is it the taste? Or the test or the taste of the pudding? Taste of will, the pudding. Will be in the, the proof, proof is in the pudding. The proof, yeah, whatever pudding. they will feel, this year we are going to demonstrate whatever that has not been understood, how it finds understanding when it comes to actually execution.